Beloveds, it is my pleasure to welcome you from all over Turtle Island to this space as we gather to remember, to reflect, and to worship. The recognition of Emancipation Day is, it's, is important as it offers to us an opportunity to reflect on the reality of the transatlantic slave trade and its continuing impact. Like the principle of the Sankofa, we look back in order to move forward. Emancipation Day might have been a moment in time. On August the 1st, 1833, the Slavery Abolition Act came into effect across the British Empire. But the reality of living into it as an act of liberation continues. The words of the musical genius and prophet Robert Nesta Marley continues to ring true as we uh, continue to liberate ourselves from mental slavery. The United Church of Canada invites your participation in the service as part of its ongoing commitment to address anti-Black racism and its journey to becoming an anti-racist denomination. May you be blessed. May you be disturbed. May your imagination take flight. May you be transformed. May you be blessed. May you be bold. May you be brave. Come, let us worship. Dieu de tous les peuples, nous venons ensemble pour t'adorer. We come before you to give you thanks and praise. Dieu de tous les peuples, nous venons à toi toutes et tous aimés de toi. We worship you today and always with our whole selves. Venez toutes et tous, adorons Dieu. Sweet. 
Dieu de tous les peuples, nous reconnaissons toute ta majesté et ta gloire. Nous te sommes reconnaissantes et reconnaissants qu'en tant que personne noire, nous, parta nous partageons, partageons, partageons ta compassion avec toute l'humanité. En ces temps d'adoration, soutiens notre élan pour te présenter la création tout entière dans sa beauté et dans sa splendeur. En ces temps d'adoration, soutiens notre élan pour faire mémoire des luttes et des souffrances de nos ancêtres. Soutiens notre avancée sur les chemins, dans la fierté, affermie par l'exemple de celles et de ceux dont les luttes et les sacrifices ont pavé pour nous les chemins de la liberté. Soutiens les réflexions qui nous conduisent au renouvellement de notre engagement à rechercher la justice et la liberté pour nous-mêmes et pour toutes les personnes dépréciées, exploitées et opprimées. À toi, Dieu, soit tout honneur et toute gloire en ces jours et pour toujours. Amen.
là, dans le désert, les Israélites se remirent à protester contre Moïse et Aaron. Ils disaient, « Si seulement le Seigneur nous avait fait mourir en Égypte, quand nous nous réunissions autour des marmites de viande et que nous avions assez à manger, mais vous, vous nous avez conduits dans ce désert pour nous y laisser tous mourir de faim. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelite, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelite, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses. I have heard the complaining of the Israelite. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord of all en effet, le soir, des cailles arrivèrent et se posèrent sur tout le camp, et le matin, tout autour du camp. Il y avait une couche de rosée. Lorsque la rosée s'évapora, quelque chose de granuleux, fin, comme du givre, restait par terre. Les Israélites le virent, mais ne savaient pas ce que c'était. Et ils se demandèrent les uns les autres, « Qu'est-ce que c'est ?» Moïse leur répondit, « C'est le pain que le Seigneur vous donne à manger. » Frères et sœurs, puisque Dieu a ainsi manifesté sa bonté pour nous, je vous invite à vous offrir vous-même un sacrifice vivant qui appartient à Dieu et qui lui est agréable. C'est là le véritable culte conforme à la parole de Dieu. Ne vous conformez pas aux habitudes de ce monde, mais laissez Dieu vous transformer et vous donner une intelligence nouvelle. Vous discernerez alors ce que Dieu veut, ce qui est bien, ce qui lui est agréable, ce qui est parfait. À cause du don que Dieu m'a accordé dans sa bonté, je le dis à chacun de vous, ne vous prenez pas pour plus que vous n'êtes, mais ayez une idée juste de vous-même. Chacun, chacune, selon la part de foi que Dieu lui a accordée. Nous avons un seul corps, mais il a plusieurs parties qui ont toutes des fonctions différentes. De même, bien que nous soyons nombreux, nous formons un seul corps en union avec le Christ et nous sommes tous unis les uns aux autres, comme les parties d'un même corps. Nous avons des dons différents à utiliser selon ce que Dieu a accordé gratuitement à chacun. L'un de nous a-t-il le don de transmettre des messages reçus de la part de Dieu qu'il fasse selon la foi? Un autre a-t-il le don de servir qu'ils servent. Quelqu'un a-t-il le don d'enseigner? Qu'il enseigne. 
Quelqu'un a-t-il le don d'encourager les autres Qu'il les encourage. Que celui qui donne ses biens le fasse avec une entière générosité. Que celui qui dirige le fasse avec soin. Que celui qui aide les malheureux le fasse avec joie. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight. For you, O oh God, are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The transatlantic slave trade involved the forced removal of African people from their homeland to become forced laborers for their co the colonies. The slave trade caused the deaths of millions of African people on their way on the ships, on the journey across the Atlantic. Approximately 12.5 million African captives were transported to Latin America and the Caribbean, while 6% were brought to North America. The law forced them to work for free change their names, abandon their fates, reject their cultures, stop speaking their native tongues, and encounter the most brutal forms of torture and abuse. If this story sounds like the story of indigenous people, it is because it is the colonial pattern of behavior. Quebec historian Marcel Trudel estimated that approximately 4,200 enslaved people were in Canada at a place called New France, and later in Upper and Lower Canada between 1671 and 1831. At first, around two-thirds of the enslaved peoples were indigenous and one-third were of African descent. When the British settlers came to Upper Canada, they brought an additional 3,000 black loyalists, enslaved men and women and children of African descent. In 1796, nearly 600 people known as Maroons were deported from Jamaica to Nova Scotia following their rebellion against the colonial government. Many worked on the third fortification of the citadel in Halifax and on government house. Others formed into a local militia company to help protect Nova Scotia from a feared French invasion. After petitioning the colonial authorities to leave the territory, 551 Maroons sailed from Halifax to Freetown, Sierra Leone. Nine remained. Over 30,000 enslaved African Americans came to Canada via the Underground Railroad until the end of the American Civil War in 1865. In resistance, Many slaves escaped to what was known as the Northwest Territory, which included Michigan and Ohio, as well as to Vermont and New York, where slavery was banned. On March 24, 2021, the House of Commons voted unanimously to officially designate August 1st Emancipation Day. It marks the actual day in 1834 that the Slavery Abolition Act of 1833 came into effect across the British Empire. This act laid the path of freedom to over 800,000 enslaved Africans and their descendants in parts of the Caribbean, Africa, South America, and Canada. 
the act confirmed Canada as a free territory for enslaved African Americans. Thousands of African Americans subsequently arrived on Canadian soil between 1834 and the early 1860s. We return to this story to remember the struggle, to reflect on the progress, and to refocus on the plan for the future. As we return to this story, we are called to remember. We are called to remember that it was no small feat for the Moseses of that time to confront the Pharaohs and give them no other choice but to let our ancestors go. We remember with gratitude the willingness of the Moseses of that time to resist and their determination to keep pushing until the enslavement of people of African descent was no longer economically or socially viable. We are called to remember that the journey to full freedom was laced with struggle, and that like the Israelites, there was struggle to survive, struggle to meet even the basic needs, there was struggle to create community, to build trust among themselves, to engage in social systems, and struggle to begin the healing, and the healing process from the physical and the emotional wounds that were passed on both generationally and personally. We are called to remember in the words of Rosamond and Weldon Johnson that we have come over a way that with tears has been watered, that we have come treading over a path through the blood of the slaughtered, and we now stand, having come out of a gloomy past. We are called to remember that God answers prayer, that God heard the cries of the enslaved and raised up the people that fought to achieve an Emancipation Day. We return to this story, and as we return, we are called to reflect. That emancipation is more than physical freedom. Emancipation doesn't happen simply because one is set free from physical or legal or social or political restriction. Freedom doesn't happen simply because one is no longer confined. The enslavement process involves both a physical and a mental component. And unlike physical slavery, mental slavery is more pernicious. Carter G. Woodson in the book, The Miseducation of the Negro, describes mental slavery this way. When you control a person's thinking, you do not have to worry about their actions. You do not have to tell them not to stand here or go yonder. They will find their proper place and will stay in it. You do not need to send them to the back door. They will go without being told. In fact, if there is no back door, Woodson says, they will cut one out for their special benefit. Their education makes it necessary. Make no mistake, friends. None of us are free from the legacy of mental enslavement. One group was conditioned to think they are superior, and the other group was conditioned to think that they are inferior, or as Woodson puts it, to know their place. We are called to reflect on how conditioned we still are. How emancipated are we? And we can make the determination by looking at the legacies of enslavement and racism that are present in our thinking and actions today. Are there still those who hold the prejudices and who seek to maintain the systems of white supremacy in various forms, and by so doing, stifle or prevent the progress 
other peoples of African descent? And are there still people of African descent who struggle to love the person who looks back at them in the mirror, who feel compelled to contort themselves to fit in, who have sacrificed their identity to be included, people who live with mental health challenges and live at a disadvantage economically and socially, all because of the embedded idea that the color of one's skin determines one's worth. If these two people exist and are still present in our society today, then emancipation has not happened. It is still happening. Emancipation did not happen on August 1st, 1934. It merely started. We are, my friends, emancipating, a process initiated by the legal declaration, but after the declaration, it is up to the people of that time to interpret what that means. At the time of the Abolition Act, there was only partial liberation. It only freed children under the age of six. Others continued to serve their former owners for another four to six years as apprentices. Today, 88 years later, our reflection must bring us to the question, how emancipated are we? While progress has been made, recent headlines and current policies would indicate not enough. The slow change, I assert, is due to complacency. A belief that because physical enslavement has changed in the laws, that everything else will follow. Neglecting the conditioning that has occurred, that has embedded the prejudicial, discriminatory, inferiority, superiority dynamic into the minds and hearts of the people. So though there is, there is legal and physical emancipation, the hearts and minds of many people have not been emancipated and their actions reflect their mindset. As we return to this story, we are called then to refocus to redirect our efforts on the conversion, transformation of the hearts and minds of the people, to help people develop an emancipated mind. And what does an emancipated mind look like? An emancipated mind recognizes God's mercy and in response lives a life of sacrifice, a commitment to doing the right thing to honor God. An emancipated mind has a renewed outlook on the way the world should work, and that outlook is informed by God's will of goodness and joy for us. An emancipated mind does not think of themselves as more highly than others and accords this same freedom to others, giving everyone an equal chance to discover their gifts and express themselves. An emancipated mind loves sincerely, hates what is evil, clings to what is good, recognizes, respects, and celebrates differences. An emancipated mind is zealous in service with an uplifting spirit that is joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. An emancipated mind practices hospitality, forgives quickly, rejoices with those who rejoice, and mourn with those who mourn. An emancipated mind lives in harmony with others and are humble enough to associate with people of low position. An emancipated mind acts with integrity and if it is possible, as far as it depends on them, 
lives at peace with everyone. We know that if more people thought this way, it would transform how the world operates. It would change human relationships and it would evolve social systems. An emancipated mind is needed for the journey ahead. If we are going to move, if we are going to progress, we need an emancipated mind to think in Christ-like terms and pave a path that leads to full freedom for all. This Emancipation Day, August 1st, I invite you to remember the story of the people of African descent. And we give thanks for the minds that fought enslavement and began the process of reshaping our society into an emancipating one. We have covered some ground with laws and policies. Now we have the task of addressing the mental enslavement. This Emancipation Day, August 1st, I invite you to reflect on the progress that has been made in the ongoing fight against anti-black racism and discrimination, to identify the areas personally and corporately that more work needs to be done. This Emancipation Day, August 1st, I invite you to refocus on facilitating the emancipating of the hearts and minds of the people around you. As hearts and minds are reoriented, it will transform attitudes and inevitably action. And in doing so, there will be complete freedom for all. Amen. Dieu, Dieu de tous les peuples de la terre, nous venons à toi avec nos joies et nos souffrances, notre espérance et notre reconnaissance. 
nous venons à toi pour célébrer notre beauté en tant que personne d'ascendance africaine. Nous célébrons notre beauté manifestée non seulement par la couleur de notre peau, mais encore bien davantage par cette beauté intérieure, par la beauté de nos cœurs. Merci, notre Créateur, de nous rappeler ton amour, ton amour pour tous les peuples et pour tout le monde. Nous nous engageons à vivre l'amour même en face des agressions, de l'oppression, des préjugés et de la haine. Nous prions pour nous et pour nos frères et sœurs en humanité de par ce vaste monde. Car l'émancipation, elle n'est pas encore une réalité vécue. Elle demeure à ce jour encore un bien lointain rêve. Many still suffer from the physical, social, psychological, and economic impacts of the world order rooted in centuries of colonial occupation, plunder, and violence against black people and people of color. Do forgive those whose actions and way of life intentionally and unintentionally cause us to physically relive the trauma faced by our ancestors. Et pourtant nous venons pleins d'espérance car tu es le Dieu de justice et avec toi tout devient possible. Ô oh Dieu, nous prions pour que tu dispenses la guérison partout où sévissent douleur et souffrance particulièrement là où les injustices et les inégalités affligent les esprits et étouffent l'espérance. Nous prions pour la paix dans un monde meurtri par tant de conflits, de divisions et de haines. Soutien au oh Dieu les victimes de situations persistantes et systémiques d'injustice et de violence pour qu'elles trouvent afin guérison, liberté et réparation. Nous prions pour toutes celles et tous ceux qui poursuivent leur lutte afin que l'émancipation soit davantage qu'un souhait visionnaire, mais devienne une réalité tangible pour des millions de nos proches et des membres de notre famille humaine. Sends 
Sânzânina, 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 Sânzânina. God of mercy, it is not always easy to forgive those who have caused harm, but we ask that even as we continue to feel the pain of injustice and oppression, you will give the strength and the will to forgive and love as you have taught us to do. Help us to form partnerships with those who share the goal of forging genuine and lasting relationships of love and peace with all humanity. We offer all our prayers to you, the God of love and mercy, through Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Notre Père, Notre Mère, qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre, comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonne-nous nos offenses, comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux qui nous ont offensés. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and forever. And never. Amen.
world we forget me shadowed beneath my hand may we forever stand true to our God true to our God true to our God true to our God Let us go to our work and in our relationships, stimulated by hope, strengthened by faith, and directed by love, to play our part in the liberation of all people. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Que Dieu vous bénisse et vous protège. Que Dieu fasse briller sur vous la lumière de sa face et vous manifeste sa grâce. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. up this morning with my mind set on freedom I woke up this morning with my mind set on freedom I woke up this morning with my mind set on freedom hallelujah 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 well I woke up this morning with my mind set on singing I woke up this morning with my mind set on singing well I woke up this morning with my mind set on singing hallelujah 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 well I woke up this morning with my mind set on freedom I woke up this morning with my mind set on freedom well I woke up this morning with my mind set on freedom hallelujah